The Magus, a peaceful leader of the land, has died, and Glaza, one of the generals of the Oracion Seis, has risen to power and imposes an oppressive regime on Felicidad's inhabitants. We'll be joining Ten and his fellow Farmagia friends to stop him. Hey guys, Ramen King here, and today we'll be reviewing Farmagia with a huge thank you to 1PR Studio and Exit Games in gifting me a key to show this game off to you guys. As I kind of prefaced earlier, the human-like, but not human, inhabitants of the underworld land of Felicidad, which apparently is a place apart from heaven and the human realm, once lived peacefully under the protection of these Farmagia guardians that protected each continent called the Oracion Seis. However, after the Magus' death, one of the generals decided to assume power, and with that power, decided to bend all the nations to his will and create this grand paradise. You know somebody is super evil when they talk about overhauling a whole land into a paradise. There's also another general named Nerys, who wants the complete opposite, and decides to defect from the Oracion Seis and rebels against Glaza's dictatorship. So the land led by Nerys, called Avrion, is now in a war against the rest of the continents, led by Glaza and the rest of the generals. We're soon introduced to our main character in Farmagia 10, and not too long after his other Farmagia buddies who end up being our main team in stopping Glaza. I personally enjoy the story, and there's a lot of side stories and voice acted dialogue, and I mean a lot of dialogue. You're going to be spending a lot of time watching a character standing in place and talking. If you're into visual novel style games, this might not be an issue, but I think this game could have benefited from a couple animated cutscenes to help break it up a bit. I found battles to be very fun in Farmagia. Your face buttons are what controls what monster you send out to attack, and each opposing monster has an icon that signifies which of your monsters would be best to send out to attack. Larger monsters have something called a KO bar. When an opposing monster gets KO'd, you can send your monsters to do something called a legion attack, where your smaller monsters fuse and become a slightly bigger monster and attack the opposing monster. You can even deplete this bar faster by performing well-timed blocks and use the proper monster that the opposing monster is weak against. You can also fuse all your buddies to perform a very cinematic fusion attack, which deals a whopping amount of damage to all enemies currently in the room. If the animation is too much for you, there's also an option to turn these off in the options. Battles in general aren't super difficult, and if you need more of a challenge, you can up the difficulty whenever you want. Can you guess where you have to go to set this? That's right, in the options menu. Who'd have thought? Something that I think the game could have done better was the practicing of mechanics in the beginning. While the mechanics are easy to understand after a couple maze runs, there are a lot of mechanics to memorize which are quickly thrown at you right in the beginning and could potentially overwhelm new players a bit. The levels that these battles take place in are called mazes, but they're less mazes than they are square rooms that you travel between via teleports and are honestly a bit bland. They're not really something you can get lost in, and they don't take much to navigate. The only thing that really changes is how the land looks. Because the lack of variety in the level design, maze running could end up feeling a little bit repetitive, but I thought that the battles themselves were exciting enough for me to overlook this. Each maze room also rewards you with either item boxes or fairy skills upon each room completion. You'll also have the opportunity to choose what kind of reward you'll receive for the next room by using the teleports with the corresponding icons. Fairy skills are buffs that last during the maze. I played with a couple, and because of how easy battles are, I found myself just gravitating toward fairy skills for the Farmagia that boost item rates and drops. Sometime during the story, you'll be introduced to elementals. Elementals form packs with Farmagia and will help strengthen your abilities out in the field. This is where relationship building with the elementals come in. You'll be giving them gifts and taking on various trials to boost your relationship with them. Each elemental also has their own storylines where you'll be finding more about their history and who they are as people. As you develop your relationships, your fusion monster abilities will also get stronger. Farming in Farmagia isn't about growing vegetables, but instead is about growing monsters for your team and for monster research purposes. Farming is very basic and definitely isn't the main draw of the game, but I'd say it's more just to help break up maze running and advancing the plot at Avrion Castle. You'll be mainly using farming to obtain new monsters or replenish your current stock of monsters if they end up being lost in battle. You'll also be farming research monsters which garners points to use on the research screen. The panels on the research screen cost points and sometimes items. Each panel is an enhancement to things like fairy skills, monsters, or the farm itself. Farming actions are also limited to your FP bar, and the only way to replenish this is to adventure into a maze, so you can't just farm the whole game. With that being said, I definitely wouldn't say farming in Farmagia will really appeal to farming sim enthusiasts, and think it's definitely secondary to the game's main draw, which is the combat. 
The visuals in this game are very saturated with color. I've seen a couple other people say it's too saturated, but I think that for something that's anime styled, I thought it was fitting or maybe I just got used to it, but I didn't really have any initial negative reactions to it. The English voice acting in the game is also really good with each of the voices being very fitting for their characters. I normally like to give English voice acting a good hour in anime style games before deciding whether to try switching to Japanese and really don't feel a need to switch at all. I think the cast did a great job. Of course, I wouldn't fault you if you didn't feel the same and luckily for players who enjoy Japanese voice acting more, you can change this in the, everybody say it with me now, the options menu. Overall, I like Farmagia. Its gameplay is very fun, it has a good storyline, it's very well voice acted in English, and it has colorful graphics that fits its gameplay. Would I say it's perfect? Absolutely not. It's got like three genres mixed together at surface level depth, leaving some things to be desired, but it's still overall an enjoyable game. I'd say the length of this game, which is like 30 plus hours of gameplay, is worth the $50 price tag, but if you're still unsure about whether you want to purchase it or not, Marvelous games usually eventually go on sale for better prices. If you guys enjoyed the review, give this video a big ol' thumbs up, and definitely drop me a subscribe for more future game reviews. Also, make sure to comment down below whether you're picking up Farmagia or not. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you all in the next video.